everybody. Welcome to Square State. I'm your host, Michelle Jackson. And this week, I'm talking the Cherry Creek Mall and the paid parking situation that just seems like it's just never going to go away. Before I get into the episode, there are a couple of things I wanted to touch base with you on. So the first thing is, episodes will now be released every Monday. So I'm happy to say I'm really into my system. I've got some cool interviews coming. And I think that Mondays are the best day for me to release episodes. Next thing is the website that accompanies Square State is no longer called coloradolovehub.info. You wonder why I changed it? Well, I'll try to remember the following uh, domain name, coloradoloveluvhub.info. It's too much. <laughs> um, it's just way too much. So I've changed it very happily to Square State. And the um, URL is squarestateco.com. So if you are trying to find it online, just go to squarestateco.com. This episode you'll find at squarestateco.com slash cherry dash creek. I'm also excited to announce that I will begin hosting in-person events. I am thrilled to be able to host them at the Commons on Champa. The first event will be on May 4th, and I call them the Welcome Mat. The idea is to really get new arrivals and current residents of the state of Colorado to kind of mix and mingle and connect and also connect with different resources that are available in the state, different business people, community builders, things like that. So I am getting that started. The Eventbrite sign up is in the show notes. So when you go to squarestateco.com slash cherry dash creek, you'll notice a link to the Eventbrite sign up. So please do sign up. There's going to be swag bags, which I like to say swag, but whatever. Um, a panel and just a lot of stuff going on. The event will go from the event will be held from 2 until 4.30 p.m. Yes, I know it's May the 4th be with you as well, but you know what? That's going to be all at night. So you, you can swing by, check out the panel, and meet new people, which is really my goal, and connect with Colorado-based businesses and the Commons on Champa, which is an amazing facility. get to the show. All right. So the other day, which was Saturday, <laughs> I'm walking around town and I decide to pop into Cherry Creek Mall. I had some like little errand that I wanted to run. I wanted to get earrings. That's what it was. So I wanted to pick up some earrings and I thought, let's, let's go to the Forever 21 at Cherry Creek Mall. And I'm going to be honest, every since Cherry Creek Mall management introduced the pay for parking situation. I have only driven to the mall since they introduced that. I want to say four times. That's been about two years. So I have literally gone to the mall via my car four times. And in fact, once I got to the mall and I was kind of shopping around and I ended up in Bath and Body Works, which I was like completely confused by because I, it wasn't in the place that it was in before. They're doing some renovations in the old spot. And so they were in this other area upstairs. But anyway, there was good sale that day. But anyway, I, I hadn't been in the mall since before November. It's April now. So I wanted to talk about Cherry Creek Mall, the parking situation, and just maybe a resolution that can be made to resolve the standoff between longtime Denver residents and Cherry Creek Mall management, because I don't think they realize that there are a lot of people who are still really pissed about this. So let's get into it. I actually did a um, side hustle at another mall last holiday season, the 2017 holiday season. It was a lot of fun, really easy. And all I had to do was help people, like talk to people as they came into the mall. I'm not going to say which one. I'm just going to say that during the course of this 
side hustle, I ended up talking to a lot of longtime Colorado residents. And we would chit chat about all the things. I'm one of those people that just manages to talk to everybody. And the parking at Cherry Creek Mall came up often. And many people made the point that, you know what, we are really pissed off about this and we will go to Park Meadows instead of to Cherry Creek Mall uh, because we don't feel like it's appropriate that we're being charged to park. And as a person who's also kind of like not excited about being, you know, charged to park to go shopping, you know, to go shopping, I really found it fascinating how many people said this to me. I'm not talking to a couple people. I'm talking every single shift that I worked. That was three to four, five hour shifts for six weeks in a row, five or six weeks in a row. People made a point that they just were not going to pay for that parking. And I was like, where is the compromise? What can be done to get people to start shopping there? Because at, at the end of the day, I want those businesses to do well. I want smaller businesses that are, are um, housed within the mall to succeed. I want them to make money. But I also don't want to be taken like a chump when I go to the mall. I don't want to be seen as an easy way to make money. And I, I just feel like sometimes big business misses the mark. And this is one of those where I feel like the management company, which I'm convinced is not in Colorado. I, I'm convinced they're not in Colorado. I'll have to research that and put that in the show notes. But um, they, they don't have a read on the people. And I think that they thought we would get over it that a lot of people who are coming to the city will be new and won't be disturbed by it because they aren't used to just driving in and, and parking for free, which is the case. Like people who just moved there, they don't know any different. Um, and then the other thing is tourists. Like it's a, it's a huge tourist destination. Tourists don't know the difference either. But the thing is, I live in the city and there are things I like to purchase at the mall besides my Apple products which were the, the reason why I actually drove to the mall because I wasn't going to walk around after getting, picking up a laptop because that freaked me out a little bit. So I drove there to get my laptop stuff done. So here's the thing. Every time I've been to the mall, like maybe I've walked over or ridden my bike, I've noticed a couple things. Parking's always available. I don't mean kind of available. I mean, there is a lot of parking constantly available. To the point where I'm like, there's not enough business going into the mall. It doesn't make sense to me that there is a literal barrier to entry to the mall during a time when people shop online. In fact, most of my shopping now is online. I really like it. So in order to get me into a mall, I have to have an experience that's really, really good. And when I'm driving up and having to get this stupid little sticker or whatever ticket and then go inside, it's really annoying. It's really annoying. And so I thought of a few things to consider for the people who manage them all. Now, as I walked around, I, again, I was like, there's a Lululemon here? That caught me off guard. And yes, there's a lot of moms who keep taking their kids for the playground, you know, the little play area experience, but that's, you know, and yes, there's a lot of moms in Denver, but you can't just hope that you've, you've got those moms coming in for the play experience. Most people shop for several hours. If they're there for a really good, like shopping experience, they're going to be there for a couple of hours. They're going to browse around. They're going to check things out. And I just don't understand this. I was excited to see the Warby Parker coming in. That was awesome. I was excited actually to see that there are stores being uh, remodeled and renovated, like, again, like Bath and Body Works and Express, <coughs> excuse me, Express, which will be um, reopening, I think, in the summer uh, in its old space. It's open, but in a new space uh, temporarily. So here are my suggestions for Cherry Creek Mall management. And 
again, my goal is to help you succeed and make money. Like that's my number one goal with this podcast is to get people into places and really enjoy them, enjoy the experience and spend their money locally. The first thing is the first two hours just need to be free. I mean, come on. I'm not just popping in for an hour to go shopping. Like that doesn't make sense. I need two hours. And I feel like this is a compromise. The next thing is all stores should be able to validate my parking. I don't really understand why some stores validate and others don't. It makes no sense. I also don't understand why only like I get why the, the movie theater does it because obviously if you're going for a movie, you're going to be there for a while, but really it makes no sense to have one hour of parking free. It just doesn't. I don't care what you tell me. It's ridiculous. You need two hours because most people take an hour and a half to two hours, especially if they have kids because kids are slow. So two hours, all the stores are able to validate with proof of purchase. That's reasonable. As for the apartment situation where people are parking, like maybe their guests were parking um, in the parking lot or what have you, or maybe the, the farmer's market people, honestly, a lot of those people weren't parking in the parking because they were, they were riding their bikes and walking over. But anyway, maybe you need to also consider creating a uh, monthly pay pass, like a monthly... Um, parking kind of structure, like some kind of way that people could just pay to park. If they, maybe they live in an apartment building next door, and maybe this is only for people who live in apartments next door. There's a small number of parking spaces where, where the mall could be like, okay, we understand that your stupid apartment building was built without parking. It's so dumb, but we're going to facilitate some help. We're going to help you with this situation. We've got a small number of, of probably like not even small because I saw that there were 1500 spaces available on Saturday at the time that I was there just on one level alone. So maybe there is a certain number on each level that's available. And people pay, depending on the level that you're, you're uh, parking on, and you get a monthly subscription. And that's, it's a win-win because your car is safe, you've got a place to park, the mall makes some money, and we're all good. We're all covered. I feel like that's pretty reasonable. Like, how hard is that? I just, I just feel like it's not working the way that they wanted it to. I know that initially a lot of businesses had a horrible time dealing with this because the foot traffic traffic dropped substantially. Um, and I don't know, what do you guys think about this? I, I'm so over the, the parking, it makes no sense to me. I want my shopping experiences to be low key, pleasant and fun. I don't wanna feel like I'm nickel and dimed. I just don't. And by the way, the other hat that I wear, the other like digital hat that I wear is I'm a personal finance blogger. And um, I, I run a blog called michelleismoneyhungry.com. It's also a podcast as well, so you can find it on iTunes. And I think about stuff like this. I think about that, those small amounts of money that add up over time. And to charge me to shop, which is how it feels, this is how people... This is how people respond to this when they end up at the uh, mall. That this, this is the experience that they're, they're having. It's not good. So anyway, listeners, I hope you had a good time listening to this episode. Again, episodes will be released on Mondays. I'm so happy because Fridays were hard for me to do that. Like by the time Friday rolls around, I want to go like hiking or something. I want to be editing a podcast episode <laughs> on Fridays. Um, don't forget the Welcome Mat event um, kicking off on May 4th at the Commons on Champa. I will have the Eventbrite sign up link in the show notes. The show notes for this episode, again, are squarestateco.com cherry dash creek. I hope you have a wonderful day and that the weather is beautiful. Square State is not a podcast. Enjoy.
If you're a business person starting a business in Colorado, you'll need a website or you need to update your website. I have two resources that I would love to share with you. The first is Grayson Bell. Grayson Bell is basically the guy who keeps all of the personal finance bloggers in the blogosphere together. He is an incredible person. He's great to work with. If you need to change your domain to HTTPS, if you need to switch your domain name like I just did from coloradolovehub.info to Square State. Grayson Bell is the person that I highly recommend. I am an affiliate. I'm disclosing that, but he's awesome. I would not recommend him if I didn't think he could do the job. He's, he's a great guy to work with. So if you have a website, check him out. The other thing is SiteGround. Many of you guys who are starting businesses or currently have a business may currently have your business website hosted with HostGator or Bluehost. Interestingly enough, I actually have two websites. One is hosted on HostGator, the other with Bluehost, and I am make, making the switch to SiteGround. If you're wondering why I'm switching to SiteGround, well, the SiteGround offers a better experience as a customer. I feel like the other companies do an okay job, uh, but I want a fabulous job. I want people to respond to me when I contact them. I want, you know, within reason, I'm not asking for crazy here. I'm just asking that my needs are met pretty quickly. And I've decided that SiteGround is the way to go. I am an affiliate of that business, but um, I'm excited to switch my websites over to them. I have a lot of friends who've done it. They've been so happy with the experience and their websites have been faster, which is huge.